What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 10 of What They Play, the interview show where we talk to people in and around video games just to kind of get to know them better. But before we jump into it, I want to ask you to do me one, maybe two quick little favors. Just leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It does help me out, helps the channel out, and I appreciate it. So I'm done talking. Let's just go ahead and jump into it. This is episode 10 of What They Play. What's up, everybody? This is episode 10 of What They Play. My guest today is formerly, formerly of GiantBomb.com. That sounds weird <laughs> just saying it. But, yeah, uh, yeah definitely. Uh, formerly of GiantBomb.com, now doing his own thing with Cloth Map. He is the number one enemy of all Ekrano clans everywhere, and he's basically Nathan Drake at this point. It's Drew Scanlon. How you doing? <laughs> Great. My shirt is halfway tucked in. Oh, awesome. Okay, that's, so this is, this is how Drake we're going to start this. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? It's it's always uh, it's always a mad dash to get these things started and figured out, and I appreciate you making the time to come on here and doing this. A lot of people were looking forward to it, so I do want to say thank you, Drew. Not a problem, CRS Oil Baron. <laughs> I am going to include that in case I, I'm going to include that story onto this. I will say real quick, <laughs> you don't want to do like a, a, a the callback that calls back to something that the audience hasn't heard. That I is mean, a that's a I, that's a giant bomb classic right there. Exactly. Actually, I've done that a couple times on this show before and had to actually include little windows in the corner. For for instance, when uh, Will cooked the steak in his hand, um, I, no one knew what we were talking about, so I included a video with that when I talked to Will Smith. <laughs> nice. That's good production. Well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. What is your actual name? Oh, you know what? Uh, this will uh, this will be a funny little story. Um, okay. My name my name is uh, C R Hess, and I've actually written into the Bombcast a lot, and actually gotten many emails read, but never ever has my name been read and someone not made a comment about it. It's my initial C and R, and the funniest moment was I asked probably the world's dumbest would you rather question on a on a Bombcast that had you, Vinny, uh, Jeff Green, and Brad Muir, and wow. As soon as my name... That's a was weird podcast. It was. I, th I don't know where everybody huh. was at. It was actually 11, 12, 13. Don't ask me why I remember that. I think it's a Call of Duty day or something. <laughs> okay. Um, it had to have been. It was a Tuesday, and they always play it on the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as my name was read, you said, that guy sounds like an oil baron. <laughs> <laughs> as yes. Soon, as soon I as... am right. <laughs> And then the conversation went about me smoking a cigar and shooting this shit with people while drunk off my ass. So, <laughs> which couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> Real quick about the show, what we like to do here is um, get to know you a little bit better. Uh, we know you got a lot going on and you've had a fantastic eight years with Giant Bomb. But we want to get to know you just a little bit better. I don't want to assume that everybody who watches this already knows who you are. So let's expose some people to who you are and what you're doing and what's in the future for you. After that, just a couple questions to pick your brain because I do that, I don't know. <laughs> and then after that, we have a fan section where I've, I've taken a couple fan questions from most notably the Giant Bomb community because Drew, they freaking love you, so. <laughs> nice. So uh, yeah, how do you want to get started? Uh, well, the first question is, I, I, I kind of have a couple staples with okay. how we go about this because the first question I ask is always interesting. The story is always different because everybody has their own way about getting to where they are. So the first question is, you, before Giant Bomb, before you knew the career path that you were going to go into, before all that funneled in, how did you get on that road? What did you do that led to where you were and to where you're going? And, and this is a very broad question. I do understand that. But just give me the best answer you can. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can, uh, if I could make Giant Bomb like the nucleus, like that's sure. where I come to and then where I leave from. Um, I, uh, I came to Giant Bomb after, well, let me start. Let me start over. Sure. High school. I, uh, a friend of mine. Um, introduced me to video editing uh, and Adobe Premiere, and um, I thought it was awesome, the fact that I could just... It was almost like alchemy or something that like <laughs> you weren't supposed to be able to do at, at my age and with my uh, resources and skills to actually make videos. Um, but uh, he, he showed me how to use Premiere, and then like I just made you know those, those dumb 
kids videos that you make just run around your backyard and and throw in dirt clods and stuff um but eventually i got to to high school and uh did a um my spanish class one of the assignments was to do a music video and everyone had to do a music video you know you all team up and stuff in Um, spanish class in spanish class it was a really cool spanish (laughs) class uh and I did mine to um, a song called Mujeres by a band called Azul Azul. That was mine. And I uh, <laughs> think three other friends helped me out. Um, but that that was where, like, actually having a an objective really changed it. And instead of just like messing around with like, Oh, I'll take this clip here and put it here. It was like, all right, I need to actually make something deliverable and it's going to be watched, watched by other humans. Uh, and that's actually a big step. So like I, I put a lot of energy into it, like made a, a shot list, um, for every single, uh, you know, verse of the song. I watched a lot of music videos to get like the, the timing down, uh, it was really like my magnum opus uh, in high school, um, but it was it was a great project. Anyway, uh, I, I didn't really do a lot of video stuff um, after high school. Um, in college, I was uh, a, a design major. Whenever I told that to people in college, they're like, "Okay, what? But what's like your actual major? Like, what are you actually <laughs> majoring?" It's no, it's design. It's that's my major. In case um, you're wondering why there was a little bit of a hit there. <laughs> That was because uh, I was just making sure that we don't lose this interview. Trust me, you don't want that to happen. Being a good producer. (laughs) We're going to continue where we were. You had uh, just got done telling us about the Spanish uh, class where you made the music video. Yes, my grand grand Spanish music video. Uh, Yeah, didn't, (laughs) didn't do a lot of video in college. Uh, Instead was focusing on like graphic design. Um my major was kind of all over the place with that stuff. Uh, but I got to like try a bunch of different types of things and see what I really liked. Um, and while I was in college, I interned at, uh, a place called backbone entertainment, um, which people may have heard of. I think their, their biggest claim to fame, at least recently or most recently was, uh, super street fighter two turbo HD remix. Uh, <laughs> they did a lot of, they, they had, uh, a lot of original projects, but they were kind of known um, for like updating, uh, um, you know, old games like that. Uh, they did the Death Junior series. Uh, Digital Eclipse, I think, was an in-house brand that was uh, part of the early Xbox Live emulation stuff. So, like, when Xbox Live Arcade launched, and there were all those old emulated games, Digital Eclipse. That was that was uh, a, a small little team within Backbone, which itself was part of Foundation Nine. None of these exist anymore. <laughs> no. Um, the landscape has completely changed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I I went there for a summer, uh, I think between my junior and senior year. And then once I graduated, I went back there uh, and got hired on as a, as a contractor doing um, artwork. Uh, not like artwork, like a piece. <laughs> I wasn't creating pieces of art, but I was doing work for the artists so i would get uh i would get so when we were working on um hd remix i would get the actual documents from the guys in japan who were actually drawing the frames beautiful art but i would get their 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 photoshop psd documents um and they would be like layers would be turned off uh they would actually write notes in layers on photoshop i imagine they were using um you know like a cintiq or something Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a drawing tablet. Um, so my task was basically to clean them all up, uh, export them out as a series of uh, PNG files that would then animate into, you know, Ryu throwing a fireball. Um, so that was one of my tasks. I also worked on uh, a game called Rock Band Unplugged. How, do, how long did you do uh, the, the previous four? The previous uh, uh, game? The, the art, doing the, the, doing the art and touching up the art. How long did you do that for? Um, gosh, that was, <laughs> so I was at Backbone those three months as an intern, and then from the end, 
end of college, which must have been June sometime, to around October, November. Wow. Uh, and in that time, okay. I, I can't remember the order of operations, but AC Remix was in there. Rock Band Unplugged was in there. I did a lot of like lighting touch-up. Uh, Death Junior, I uh -huh. did a lot of kind of QA stuff. Um, like I would run through the world and, oh, this box is floating up in the air. Uh, I need to <laughs> go into the Maya model and then get its X, Y, and Z axes correct so that it actually lands on the terrain geometry. Like really, really like contractor style stuff. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it. Um, but eventually, like, quota, uh, like you had a quota you had to get through in a certain amount of time. No, it wasn't like that. <laughs> it, and it was, it was more like let's let's just hammer on this thing uh, and and make it polished, you know. Um, and I was I was uh, one of the guys that was just kind of looking out for for stuff like that, and, and you know they would kind of just toss me. I was kind of there for whatever kind of things they wanted to throw at me. Mm -hmm. uh, but eventually. Um, we didn't really have a lot of uh, work for someone like that. So when my contract uh, expired, usually it gets renewed, but mine was not because there was just not a lot. It was right in the middle of the recession. It was 2008. Right. Um, not a lot of work going around, so my contract was not renewed. Um, no hard feelings for those guys. I love working there. Uh, a lot of them have gone on to do uh, bigger and better things. Um. But uh, I was looking for a job, and I went to Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> as you do. As, as you do. Uh, and I had taken some web programming classes in college and, and really enjoyed them. Um, I, I learned some PHP and MySQL, but also this, uh, this sort of visual programming language, I think they like to call it, which uh, is called processing. And it is kind of made for artists to kind of get things onto the page, like actually get something um, up on the screen and moving and uh, without having to know, like, have, you know, without having to have a computer science degree, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really fun. I, I really enjoyed programming. It's a perfect blend between the left and right brains. Uh, anyway. I was looking at like internet jobs, so I saw this company called Whiskey Media. Um, was looking for interns, and uh, I thought maybe I could parlay my knowledge of web programming into um, into a job. So I went and interviewed there. I from the job posting, I didn't know that they had a video game brand, uh, and yeah. even when I got there. So if you've seen the videos of the old Whiskey Media office. You enter from the street and go up some stairs, and that's mm -hmm. Whiskey Media upstairs. Uh, we're unbeknownst to me, basement days, right? Yeah, this is basement days. Okay. I didn't know there was a video game website in the basement, uh, <laughs> so I went into the interview, and I don't even remember this. Vinny told me about it years later. <laughs> I went into the interview, and I sat down, and then I think Vinny and maybe Jeff came in and they just like materialized out of nowhere like I, I didn't see them on my way in but they had come from the basement <clears throat> um <laughs> and so i had my just interview the there image of jeff emerging from a basement and then he's there <laughs> yeah it was weird because like you have to go out the the basement led to the street so you had to exit the building and then turn around and walk back in it was it was really bizarre so um uh but yeah, I I think it it was kind of lucky that they um, had asked me about video games and about video because I was not there for a video game video uh, <laughs> position. Um, and you know, I I've loved games since I was uh, a kid. Uh, I got a Sega Genesis when I was five, and my uncle gave me his Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Um, so, and, and I had watched a lot of the uh, One Up show uh, right. in high school and college. Um, so I was arcade. kind of, My. yeah, a little <laughs> arcade, but also like I, I think following One Up kind of um, gave me a sense as to what 
the audience, like the the gaming enthusiast audience, was like and what they what they liked and wanted and and, and wanted to see. Um, so I, I imagine a lot of that informed my responses when they asked me about it. Um, but anyway, uh, they they hired me on as an intern, uh, and I did in fact ship a lot of T-shirts, which is what the intern <laughs> duty was. Um, and after a few months, uh, they decided to try me out um, editing video uh, and hired me full time. And originally, I was working on Comic Vine and Anime Vice. Mm. I don't know if people out there remember Anime Vice, but it was one of the uh, lesser known Whiskey Media properties. Um, but we tried to do video there, and uh, I. I don't know. I I was always kind of at a loss um, with that because I, I didn't really know anime that well. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I did some Comic Vine work, went to Comic Con. Um, Comic Con is an experience. Not It's a different experience from the fan perspective than it is from the like someone who's working at Comic Con. Um, I think that may have been the most hectic shoot i've done just because there are so many people on the show floor yeah uh, and it's very much a catch as catch can like walking around going there's that guy let's go see if we can interview it's a very like a run and gun sort of thing so doing that all day i lost four pounds uh oh at God. that first comic con and i i even or more so back then i did not have, have a lot to lose um so that I was just exhausted, and we worked so long and so hard. Uh, but it was it was that first taste of, and I would get a lot of the city three of um, work really really hard, but then be proud of what you created. Uh, that's especially the early E threes. That's what that felt like. Um, it was like this, the fun you never want to have again. <laughs> Uh, the how did I get through that but man look at these great things I made um, yeah extreme highs through extreme lows <laughs> it, it, it's, yeah it, I mean it wasn't like tolls. yeah yeah. Go ahead. yeah and like we enjoyed it while we were doing it it wasn't like this this sucks this is terrible it's just it was mm -hmm. it was uh, physically draining mm -hmm. um, but uh, very rewarding. Definitely, that's great. Yeah. Um, so, so you you've gotten through that. Now you're 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 working, you're working at Giant Bomb. You you you've done a lot of work there throughout the years. I got I gotta say I gotta ask you, we 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 followed you. Most of most of the, the people watching this followed you throughout most of that time. Um, but I want to jump a little bit ahead of, ahead of this now, and I want to ask you about cloth map. But I want to ask you more specifically. When did you just like? Was it an instantaneous like this is what I have to do, or was it a gradual progression into thinking this is where it's heading? How do I get this to be a reality? Yeah, um, it wasn't it wasn't like a bolt of lightning sort of deal. Um, I think it was a um, just kind of a feeling of uh, like what's what's the next chapter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I really enjoyed my time at Giant Bomb, and you know, uh, you know like like I said um, on the podcast, the, the Bombcast that I when I announced when I was leaving, um, it's it's not from any dissatisfaction with with Giant Bomb or or CBS. It's just I just felt like I needed to try something. You know, I uh, I'm 30 fair. years old. You don't seem like someone who should sit in uh, the same place for too long. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'll 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 take it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I I'm 30. Um, I've been at Giant Bomb for eight years. Uh, I have a lot of energy <laughs> um, to to try new and different things. Um, and I think um, 
it was just a good time to to do that. I felt really good about where Giant Bomb was. They, um, you know, were were solid when I left. Mm-hmm. Uh, They're so good at adapting. They I felt really... they could they could go on. Yeah, they they really are. Um, I, I think that's it's one of the benefits to having a small team mm-hmm. is that it's it's agile. Um, a lot of there's a lot of. Um, uh, headaches that are associated with having a small team. Um, I think one thing people don't really realize is that when, like Giant Bomb, there there are, we have support teams mm-hmm. um, like engineering and design, um, and to some de- lesser degree marketing, but those are those are shared resources. Uh, with, with the rest of CBSI. Uh, the only devoted person to Giant Bomb that you don't see is a guy named Dave. Um, not Dave Snyder. He's another Dave. Um, <clears throat> uh, Dave. <laughs> and he does, yeah, <laughs> hardcore Dave. <laughs> yes. Uh, so he does, um, he kind of interfaces with the rest of CBS. Uh, particularly on the on the business sides, and, and and says, all right, what what makes sense um, for like what what initiatives uh, should we focus on here? Like he he's the guy that can translate Giant Bomb to people at CBS, um, and uh, can I and is kind of the question? one looking out for us. Yeah, is he the guy that inevitably got it greenlit that Jeff and Dan did the video game thing with the roller coaster? Uh, no, he <laughs> he is. We never have to ask permission. Or oh, we, really? Uh, you have that much freedom. That's amazing. Yeah, we we never have to ask permission to to do any kind of content. It's more a Dave. Um, Dave extracts from us what we want to do, and then, oh, wow. um, and then sees how it's going. Basically, Dave sees how it's going. Uh, That's great. <clears throat> uh, it's it's nice to just have a guy who has your back and is kind of looking at the whole picture. Um, okay, like an outside because, perspective looking in. That's that's actually really resourceful. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the thing is. He's the only person that um, that is dedicated to us. So we do everything else, and doing everything. I'm saying we, but um, you know, back then, uh, Understood. back then, or when it hasn't been that long. <laughs> some other, yeah. When when something else came up. Um, it would be one of us that resolves it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think people assumed that we would spend all day just recording videos and stuff. But like, right. as, as anyone knows, working in an office or working at a job, other things come up. Um, sure. yeah, uh, sensitivity training, um, meetings, mm-hmm. uh, you know, about the future of like, we need to redesign the homepage, things like that. Um, when I spoke with Austin, he was he said he could not believe how many meetings there actually were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, a and large it's portion like, that you don't see at home. You don't see those those things, you know. But it, but you're right. It is a big company, so of course they're going to make you take sensitive sensitivity training. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but like meetings, meetings get things moving in a company like that and when you have a shared um resource like an engineering team uh especially a large one you need to bring everybody together and and focus them on uh tasks like that so the meetings aren't just like superfluous big corporation things they're like they're actual they need to happen because we need to move this website forward and improve it and and just keep and keep the lights on yeah um so it yeah it wasn't like we were sucked into meetings against our will it was like (laughs) well this is the work that has to happen to keep 
this website running. Um, Absolutely. So it's, it, you know, that's just the realities of, of a job. Sure. Um, but, uh, so, yeah. So you it, it wasn't a it wasn't a, a bolt of lightning that, that that caused you to think of cloth map. But once you started getting things together, once you started realizing that this was the path and the evolution of Drew Scanlon, where you were headed next, um, how how did you finally feel when you realized that this is the thing? Was it just a wait, like, or was it more was it like stressful to get there? Or was it like all of the above? It's it's honestly it's it's been very gradual. I think. Um, you know, once I kind of realized that I wanted to, to take the next step, what well, I didn't even know what that meant, um, right. at that point, it was like, okay, uh, this chapter is closed, um, time to begin a new one. And that mentality, I think kind of was, um, comforting in a way because it was like, there was, it wasn't a decision. Almost. It was, right. well, this is what I have to do. So I never had any doubts or anything. Um, mm -hmm. It was kind of something I, I knew that I had to, I had to try. Because sure. if I didn't at least try it, like, uh, I would regret it. So, Drew, what is cloth map? <laughs> what is cloth it. map? What, what is it? Great idea. <laughs> uh Cloth Map uh, is a video doc documentary series that uh, explores the people, places, and cultures of the world through the lens of games. And games can mean video games, it can mean board games, it can mean sports, it can mean whatever you do for entertainment. Uh, the, the thesis is basically that um, every single person on Earth loves having a good time, right. so... So let's use that to examine other cultures and see just how similar they all are to us. Um, it is uh, something that came out of my uh, love of traveling. Um, and a, a lot of the lessons that I, or things that I had noticed and learned uh, while I was traveling, um, particularly in um, in North Korea, which uh, we did a video on Giant Bomb of the photos I took there. Um, I One was of my favorite videos, by the way. Oh, uh, ever. oh, thank um, you. It, I I've shown that to so many people, so many people. It's a great video. Thank you. Um, it was it was quite an experience. Um, but I think one of the things that struck me the most was like this. This is North Korea we're talking about. No one gets in or out. Uh, <laughs> no, there is no internet. Uh, well, technically, there's like an intranet. I think there's like a North Korean computer network that you can only access North Korean stuff. Anyway, but no one has it. Um, uh, there's no influence from the outside. I mean, virtually none. Uh, I think. I think uh, there's like this <laughs> uh, underground market of USB sticks with like episodes of Friends on it. Um, things like that. Anyway, so you get very little. There, there's, they call it the Hermit Kingdom because it's so it's so isolated. Despite that, while I was there, everyone just seemed like people. It was just this. I don't know what I was expecting. I guess like brainwashed automatons, but like that wasn't real. Um, everyone was just trying to live. What's well, a double-sided? Uh, sword here because while they have they, they are enclosed in in things from the outside we actually you know maybe we only get the one side that we're told as well just we think we have the freedom to know everything because of where we sure. live you know so that mentality is is not your fault whatsoever yeah and I think it's it's um yeah not a lot of information comes out of there uh, and as a result, you get a very one-dimensional look um, at, at a country like that. And I'm not saying, like, I went there and, listen, I know these people because I went there. That's, that is not the case. Uh, but you, I you, got, know, you know what you're told until you learn enough to tell someone else about it. That, that, is, that is how this, this works. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, 
yeah, it was just these these glimpses of of humanity. And if and if I can have that uh, feeling with a person from North Korea, <laughs> then that must be applicable to virtually all of the rest of the world. So uh, I want to test it. So the trip to North Korea was the unintentional birth of cloth mat. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, it's I, you could probably trace um, elements of it, you know, every tri <laughs> trip I've gone to. Um, I just, yeah, there's something about just being completely immersed in uh, a, a foreign world mm -hmm. with... It really shows you. It shows you two things. Uh, it shows you who you are from a resourcefulness perspective, um, because when you are completely, you know, divorced from anything familiar, you're forced to kind of rely on your your wits and your logic. Right. Um, but also, being physically removed from the place that you are, that you um, usually inhabit. Almost by definition, you are looking at your life from an outside perspective. So you can you can analyze uh, you know your day to day life. Like, well, why don't I do this? Like, if you're out traveling, and you do something fun, you can think, well, why don't I do this more? Or, man, I'm not looking forward to getting back and doing this. Why don't I just cut that out of my life? Like, it's this it's mm -hmm. this weird. Um, analysis that you're able to do uh but that's i mean that's kind of ancillary to um to what? the project but uh it's something to look for or two um i don't know how much you can or or you know would talk about this as of this point right now but when you start thinking about cloth map and you start thinking about you know the future uh does any individual places just really stick out that you that you would want to eventually get to uh, things like you know, like a World Cup or anything like that, really just just shout out to you. Yeah, I think um, they're more they're more places than anything than than maybe events like that. Um, although I would love to go to Eurovision, uh, <laughs> but I've I've never been to Africa, uh, um, I, and the. The very fact that I just say Africa is another reason why I'd really like to go because um, I think like a lot of Americans, it kind of all just gets lumped together. I mean, there it's a humongous continent with tons of different countries. Like it's got, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, it's, <laughs> you know, I, I want to see the, the shades of Africa, the gradients, uh, and get like a better mental picture of that. Right. Um, gosh. Uh, Siberia, Mongolia, um, Ukraine, Cuba. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that are really high on my list. All right. Well, there's obviously way more to come about Cloth Map. Um, again, I, I always like to make sure people know this. I will leave every link down below as far as the Patreon and and to make sure that people know how to to get in contact with this information and can follow along your Twitter account, everything like that. Cool, um, man, thanks. I'll, again, at the end, I'll, I'll repeat that just so we can we can make it make it happen. I want people to definitely be more aware of what you're doing because it's great work. You do great you. work. <laughs> um, I mean, I haven't done haven't done much under the banner map just yet. Um, right, but, but you know gonna... what I mean. You, you your work is definitely quality work. Just from the time that that I've seen through Giant Bomb, and it, it's definitely quality work. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, this is the, 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 the. <laughs> I'm gonna try that over. Um, a couple for fun questions that we have here. All right. Um, I'm gonna skip around a little bit. This one's, this one's an impossible question. It just kind of is. Um, but I want hey. you to do the best you can to answer it in in the best way you you can possibly think of. But with your time with Giant Bomb, could you point out a couple handful of moments? I know you can't pick out one because that, that like I said, impossible. But can you pick out a couple handful of moments that just stand out to you? Uh, more than more than others might. That you, some of your favorite moments. Standout moments. Yes. Um, I think the first thing that came to mind was um, 
there are points that during uh, particularly event coverage where, especially in a place like E3, where it's just it's it's stacked wall to wall with appointments, um, and you know back in the days when we would go to a full day of E3 and then come back to like you know the front rat house that we were shooting at and then film. Uh, you know, 40 minutes or an hour of impressions and then sit down and do a live stream. It was just all day, nonstop stuff. And it was, you know, like I said, very rewarding. But at the end of it, you, we would just be exhausted. <laughs> so, um, uh, Vinny and I uh, and uh, sometimes Joey, Joey Famelli, who currently works at um, Tested.com, um, and uh, and then later in, in the cycle, Jason, <clears throat> Um, would find time to just have meals together, uh, you know, sort of decompress, like shield ourselves from the chaos outside. And and those I remember really, really enjoying uh, meals like that. Um, but it's it's funny. I don't I don't know if if this is just the nature of memory, but. Uh, a lot of my favorite moments are those that are on camera. Um, you know, I, I <laughs> I'm really glad that I saved all that um, outtake footage of uh, Ryan Davis and was able to edit that into um, uh, a, a good video because that's that's. I mean, Ryan didn't know he was being recorded. Uh, I mean, he probably did, but he didn't expect any of that to see the light of day, and that was just that was just Ryan. Um, so I'm glad we have that that slice of 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 what he's really like in there. Although, like, there wasn't much difference between <laughs> the Ryan that you heard and and real Ryan. Is that the video that had the outtakes from the Game of the Year stuff, where he was just walking around in the police outfit, acting like an airplane and things like that? Like, I I recently re watched a video like that with Ryan in it, and. It was it was great. Is that in it? I can't remember. It most started... most of what I had saved was um like before the quick look had started. Okay. All so right. it was just a bunch of like Ryan randomly riffing on whatever was in front of him. <laughs> just to uh, kind of warm up his his, you know, funny muscles. Yeah, Ryan yeah. was Ryan was hysterical. At yeah. all times to to the audience. <laughs> um, let's yeah. see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump down to. Uh, I gotta ask you, how did you get so interested in in simulation games? I was gonna say flight sims, but it doesn't stop with flight sims. It doesn't just stop oh. there. <laughs> no, I think. Uh, well, how did I get interested? I think um, the how is. Uh, my uncle was into flight sims. Okay. Um, and whenever we would visit him, he lived in Florida and we lived in California. So whenever we would visit him, it was like this big deal. Oh, and, and my cousin had an NES. And we played Mario three. So it was great. Uh, but he had, he had, um, uh, a joystick and Microsoft flight simulator. And it was <laughs> this like matte black with red buttons joystick. It wasn't like mm -hmm. the fancy ones that glow blue nowadays. It's like this, um, this very like military looking thing, and I just I marveled over it. And he let me fly it once, uh, and I flew a Learjet at like almost Mach one under the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, and I, I still remember that. I must have been like ten years old. Um, but I think what what this runs deep. keeps me. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> And I had always loved planes and space and, um, uh, you know, and army stuff. Uh, and a lot of simulators are around army stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I think what... I think at a, at a deeper level, what I like about them is that it feels like... Uh, and, you know, racing games are in this category as well. They, it feels like you are developing or honing uh, a skill. Um, and that's weird to say because when you, if you really abstract it, then you are doing that with no matter what game you're playing. Like you, you play enough Zelda, you get really good at Zelda. You know, Dark Souls is a perfect example of this. Yeah. You know, people can, uh, you know, do naked runs because they're just really good at the game or Monster Hunter. 
Um, would you say that in the in its most natural forms, games like original Donkey Kong and Pac Man are like the prime examples of that? Yeah, they're probably the most um, most distilled I mean, or arcade game, games in general. Like the lo- the better you were, yeah, the longer you could play. Um, yeah. So I think there's some of that aspect to it, and also I think having uh, a real world analog tacked onto that is also fun like learning how an actual a10 warthog works uh is 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 cool because you know that the decisions that are made about where these buttons go and how everything works is not um it's not just a game designer you know figuring it out it's like these are the people that build warplanes uh, and it has to be able to fight in a combat zone. Uh, you know, I just, I nerd out about that stuff. Okay. Um, so, I, I, you know what? I, I had another question. You, you pretty much just covered it all. So, uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I have nothing. Like, you, you covered every aspect of that question. I had, like, a part two. And it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> I think um, I I think I primed my brain with the uh, the Reddit Ask Me Anything uh, that yeah. I did this week. <laughs> so it's just like I got all the questions, and now I'm just combining all of them together and spewing them to you. It was a it was a a, a positive and a negative for me when you messaged me and said, "Hey, maybe we should wait a little bit so we can talk about the other thing." <laughs> and I didn't know what the other thing was, but then in between there, you did a giant question and answer on Reddit. <laughs> Um, let's jump on to, how about some fan questions? I, uh, yeah. actually, hold on one second. Actually, I do have one more question that's selfish before I get to the fan questions. Okay. It's my, it's my fan question. So, um, I, I need to know the answer to this cause I don't think I ever actually heard the answer. Um, did you get in trouble for shooting an arrow down a, a hallway at CPS? <laughs> Uh, in trouble? No. Okay. Well, I guess it depends on your definition. Was there a meeting? Um, <laughs> there was no meeting. Okay. Uh, although I came in, I think that was a Friday or a Thursday or something. I came in after the weekend and my bow was gone. Uh, <laughs> Confiscated. I had left it right by my desk and I had no idea where it went. <clears throat> um, and it was missing for months until I finally went down to uh, uh, like the first floor security desk and they were like, oh yeah, it's over here. We took it. <laughs> we didn't want a weapon laying around. In case you just lost it one day, we just want to make sure we had this. I mean, it's their <laughs> prerogative. They are security. So, uh, yes. I like that they were just so, like, not in trouble there. So. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's just leaning against a wall. Yeah, yeah. I mean... That's- Ask for forgiveness, not permission, right? It's easier. <laughs> you get shut down way less if you do that. So, all right, fan questions. And I'm going to try to um, editorialize some of these because they tend to go a little long. Uh, but uh, And I'm not going to guarantee if you uh, ask the question, I may not be able to get your name right because a lot of these are usernames. So. But the first one's easy. This is Mark Baggio. Mark Baggio asks, Did you suffer any emotional trauma after playing all of the Metal Gear, ga- Metal Gear games in such a short amount of time? And also he wants you to ask you about uh, how does it feel having so many people watching what you're doing in a, in a series that is so near and dear to everyone's heart who was watching it? Uh, I'll, I'll answer the second one first. Um, I think... I think I tried to emphasize as much as possible um, what my experience was as I was playing through it, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, this is... I'm going to play this the way that I play games, um, and I'm going to interpret this the way that my mind works, you know? So I'm not not reviewing these games. um, And... Thankfully, they are very open-ended, uh, and you can play them however you want. I mean, a lot of people think that I played them the wrong way, uh, <laughs> but I did, and I didn't. So, um, I think uh, 
yeah, I, I never really worried about that too much. <clears throat> um, because I was, I was having fun with them. Um, I, I think having them back to back like that was actually really positive because I got to see, um, I mean, it was like watching a box set of DVDs, like a TV show. Like I got, I got it all compressed for me, uh, and I was able to remember things that had happened in the past. You know, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, you know, played Metal Gear Solid Two over and over and over again, and and knew it intrinsically by the time three came out. So that when there are callbacks in three to two, you go, oh, I remember that. I if I had gone that long having played it once, I would not have gotten that thing. But because uh, I had only played it like you know a month ago, um. I got a lot of that stuff, so uh, I think it was any any more compressed. I don't think I could handle, uh, <laughs> and even then, it, it was like cramming things into my brain, and a lot of stuff spilled out my ears. Personally, um, I saw a I saw a moment. It was a trigger moment in Metal Gear Solid Five where I could see it. You were just like, I'm kind of done with this. It was it was about three quarters of the way. It seemed like you were you were getting there. <laughs> I might have even been the moment where the, the the end of that one was. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Kind of a slog. It was. It was the end of the toward the end was kind of a slog. Yeah. What was well, your moment? It's, well, it's also the it's also it was the moment where you looked at Dan and said, "I'm done with this, right?" And he was like, "Uh," and you're like, "No, it's over, right?" No. <laughs> and you were roped back in for another thing. <laughs> yeah, and that was less like I'm done with this. It, as oh no this is happening again because that has happened before <laughs> like in metal gear one or two like the the you think it's over but the, i mean it's it's a it's a trope of a lot of games but uh mm-hmm. yeah eric and the legion asks if drew could fly one vehicle of any kind what would it be and why i personally think a harrier would be pretty freaking sweet yeah, Harry would be cool. I think it'd be really tricky. Um, I think. I mean, if it's not, you know, like a spaceship, because then I get to be in space. That'd be. I mean, that's kind of the, the cheating answer. But if it's like an actual airplane that exists, uh, I would probably say the SR seventy one. Um, I think it's just such a fascinating plane. Um, even down to like the, the weird minute details. It is it's a it's a ramjet engine, which means, and I hope I'm getting this right, <laughs> that when it is at speed, you are literally just dumping fuel into a chamber, and it is exploding at out the back no moving parts and as such there is there is only a theoretical maximum of speed so the thing can go as fast as you want to push it um wow. also it can go really really high so when you are flying it you are wearing a spacesuit, uh <laughs> and you're you are like at the edge of the atmosphere so you can see the curvature of the earth like that all of that sounds amazing. And you're flying over the Soviet Union and taking spy pictures. Like, it's just... Everything about that plane is cool. Also, when it's because of the uh, the heat that the engines generate, when they're, when they're just burning fuel like that, the metal expands. So, if they built the engine, uh, like, seams uh, right next to each other, and then turned on the engines, they would buckle. So the seams of the engines are actually built kind of far apart. So when the plane is on the runway, it's leaking fuel. Wow. <laughs> and only when it is at speed does it close up. That's That sounds insane. The, yeah. to, to even know, to figure that out, to do that, to, that sounds terrifying. Yeah. There is yeah. A, there's a book called Skunk Works by Ben Rich. Uh, which goes into all that kind of stuff. Um, it's it's very very well done and not not super technical either. I think if you just like cool uh, machines, um, anyone would like that book. 
you are um, learning to fly your own plane. And we are the polar opposites. I've never even stepped foot on a plane. <laughs> so, At all? Never. Never. Really? Never. And and it's not... I have, I have a... <laughs> I have a horrible fear of heights, but that's not, I can't use that as an excuse really, I guess, because uh, it's different when you're in a plane. Yeah. It's almost abstracted. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know really why, I guess maybe I'll make a video of it. Maybe I'll make a, <laughs> my first flight or something, but I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a little terrified to be honest. I would, I would, I would love, um, an adult's perspective, like, sit there with a with a notebook and like write down your emotions and what you're feeling and uh i think that would be really interesting oh god i have to do it now thank you <laughs> <laughs> but do you huh do you do an airliner or do you do like a little four seater cessna as your first one I, I they're have... really different i think if you do it you got to go the experience you got to go the the uh, air terminal, you've got to go the whole experience of, of, of getting... That's right, you've never done that either. I've not done nothing. Yeah. My feet my feet are underground. They're so buried in <laughs> earth. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just... Uh, I, I've never... I've never... Really, I've never had any reason to go anywhere personally as far as that's concerned. But, but I do now regret not traveling a lot. When I was younger, you know, now I'm in a stage in life where I have kids and all these responsibilities, but I, I'm definitely thinking that it's time to start managing that a little better and reach out a little bit, a little bit outside the box. I'm going to go ahead and jump on yeah. so we don't talk about me flying anymore. It gives me <laughs> horrible anxiety. Um, I'm going to ask just two more questions. This one okay. comes in from Borelio. I have no idea what his name is. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, this one's a lot more. It's kind of funny. This one's about being on the ground. Um, <laughs> he asked, is there, he remembers you talking about loving to hike and trails and, and just being out and about and asks if there were any places that were just absolutely breathtaking that you enjoyed hiking on and any stories you may have from it. Um, Yosemite, uh, in, in California, uh, probably my favorite place. I haven't actually spent a lot of time, um, in many other spots actually actually backpacking uh than the sierras but i i absolutely love the sierras um actually as part of my uh high school education i went to like this weird hippie high school where uh everyone was required to in order to graduate to go on uh a 26 day backpacking trip with their um, and I, I knew I would like it. Um, <laughs> I was in the Boy Scouts and, and, and grew up camping with my with my dad um, and my brother. But uh, what surprised me was the people you never expect to absolutely love it. Um, like one of my great friends is like this, uh, like history buff, and you know loved engineering and I could before that I could never see him like uh you know hiking on a trail much less um you know sleeping on a mat under a tarp in a rainstorm uh but he he loved it so much he actually went and did like was an instructor for the following year so you you, you never know uh about other people or about yourself until you're put in in situations like that um, and if we could tie it all back together, that's another one of the many reasons that I decided to, to take a chance on cloth map is that like you, you don't know the doors that are going to open, uh, when you put yourself in a weird situation like this. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what those are. That right there, the way you tied all that in together is from so many years of being behind a microphone. That was seamless and perfect <laughs> in every single way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, that's really all. That's that's all I have. The only other question is, and this is literally from every human being that I, I came in contact with. For some reason, this was the question. There's always one with the interviews. Mm -hmm. There's always one question that people just hammer me with. 
people just for God's sakes. So someone doesn't show up at my front door and, and hurt me for not asking you this. Just occasionally put out a tweet about Final Fantasy VI and your progression, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> I actually, I had not um, played much of it at all after that uh, Unprofessional Friday segment where I showed it on camera. Um, because that was a really tough battle. Yeah. And I actually went back a couple of times. I didn't beat it on the stream. Game, and I went back a couple of times and I beat it, um, but I was just exhausted after that. But recently, I went back to it, uh, which was itself um, a difficult task. I'm sure you and a lot of your listeners know, going back to especially not only an RPG, but a JRPG with no real quest log uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that I know of. Something we uh, take advantage um, of. Or you have no granted. idea what you're doing. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't... I wanted to try to figure it out, so I just wandered around for like two hours just around the map because it's like... It's not like you go to a zone and then... like It's an old game, right? Like you don't... There's no waypoint. There's no like... Uh, <laughs> person chiming at you over a radio saying like, hey, don't forget, you got to do this thing. You don't like get to a zone and then a person comes up to you and says, hey, you should talk to this guy. It's like, no, you have to go to this specific place and talk to this one guy. Uh, and I, I couldn't find it. So I, I finally resorted to an FAQ. Thank you, GameFAQs. Find <laughs> CBS Interactive Property. Uh, and uh, now I am looking for Tara. She went missing after the big battle. So that's what's happening. There's a update. Phase six. I don't for the want G any no phone calls, no 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 uh ringing my doorbell and ditching. Just leave me alone. He answered the question. <laughs> I think that's by the way, I think this is fascinating that so many people want to know this because it's not like I've been live streaming it. Mhm. Mm uh and I can't because it's on a Game Boy Micro. <laughs> um and I I doubt I could like copy my saves I, yeah I, don't, I have no idea how that would work um but I, I started on the micro i want to finish it on the micro but people are still really intrigued i think it just speaks to that game and 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 how it really grabbed people so uh sure. and, and it doesn't hurt that you know for for weeks on end there were there were small chunks and segments dedicated on the bombcast to asking you about your progression so it was all it's right. learned it's learned behavior at this point <laughs> i guess yeah could be. Um, I want to just close out by saying again, thank you very much for coming on here, giving me your time to be on here, talk about what what makes Drew Drew, and what gets uh, what what what's coming up in the future for Cloth Map. Um, is there anything that you would like to add as we're closing this out about the future? Um, I hope maybe in in some way that. Um... The people kind of feel better about making changes of their own. Um, like it was a, you know, despite all I talked about, like feeling like I, I had to do it, so it wasn't there wasn't any, um, uh, uh, you know, hesitation. There. It was still really scary uh, and really emotional. Um, you know, I, I loved working at Giant Bomb you know, gave eight years of my life to that place. Uh, and I'm so much better for it. So walking away from it was really, really tough. Um, but I, I think that, you know, if it's something that you care about, um, and you know, your, your happiness is something that, that everyone should care about. Um, that, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to, or you should maybe push past your fear uh, to to try something new. Um, and I, I think, to a man, everybody at Giant Bomb um, was uh, very supportive, uh, and they they knew exactly um, that it was just something I had to do, and uh, they they wished me they wished me very well. Awesome. That's great. And I, again, as I said earlier, I'll leave links to everything that uh, is attached for, for you and, and Cloth Map down below. Go check it out, everybody. 
apparently I have to go get on a plane. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot for your time. Uh, good luck, man. Good luck and everything. Thank you. And, and I can't wait to see the updates. Thanks, man. Hey, guys. Welcome back. That was episode 10 of What They Play. I really want to say thank you again to Drew Scanlon for coming on the show, giving us some time to just talk about whatever. He really was an open book. And I I can't say how much I appreciate it. it it's really awesome. The show What They Play is, is, is evolving, man. You guys, we're in episode 10 now. That may not seem like a lot, but there's been... On my end, there's been a lot of emails, a lot of discussion, a lot of planning, a lot of writing, editing, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of work, but it is making me so happy that we are finally in double digits. And there's some guests that I have an eye on that I really want to get on the show. I really want Ed Boone on the show. <laughs> I actually reached out to Ed Boone a long time ago and heard nothing back. So, Ed Boone, come on the show. I want to talk about... Mortal Kombat and, and, and just video games in general and, and production of video games. Just come on the show, damn it. <laughs> but I'll keep working on that. I want you guys to have a wonderful day, and thank you so much for tuning in. It means a lot to me. Again, if you'd leave a like and, and subscribe, that's awesome. And also, forget that. If I'd much rather you go down and check out uh, Drew's Patreon for, for Cloth Map and check out his Twitter. Uh, follow along if you don't know who Drew is and you just learned who he is in this interview. Um, you're going to be in for a treat. His work is absolutely stellar. Uh, I'll leave a link also to giantbomb.com if you're not if you don't know what Giant Bomb is, go check him out. There's also a website called thequicklookcrew.com. I'll leave a link to that down below as well, where you can actually uh, pick the people who were on the videos on Giant Bomb, and uh, if you want to just look and search for Drew videos, you can just find all of his work there. It's somewhere behind a, a premium wall because th that's how they fund their business that's how they fund their website but uh, there's a lot of also free stuff to check out as well so go do that learn about drew learn about cloth map learn about all the stuff he's doing it's great you guys are great thank you and have a wonderful day Could you go ahead and say something real quick? Yeah, three, two, one. Do you need me to clap? It, it, no, that's fine. I, I'll just I'll figure it all out. Need a hot mic? Check <laughs> one, two. Make sure I'm not peeking all over the place with my plosives.